In this section, we very briefly go over the elements of a statistical toolbox. Each node in a statistical analysis map is an instance of a class. These classes we consider to be the tools, the kinds of things that we can use in a statistical analysis. They're kept in something called a toolbox. If we expand this toolbox icon here, we see some of the kinds of statistical analysis nodes that we could create. Some of these we saw in the previous analysis map, like bivariate regression or bivariate least squares. Statistical toolboxes are very much like analysis maps in the sense that they're meant to be used and manipulated by the user. And like analysis maps, toolboxes can contain sub-toolboxes. Here in this particular toolbox we have three. Each is mouse sensitive. If we zoom in on this particular toolbox, for example, we get a sub-toolbox, this one containing all of the graphics that you could use in a kind of analysis. In summary then, the toolboxes are networks to be used by the user to contain the tools that can be used to construct new analyses. Here we have the demographic analysis that we considered earlier at the highest level of organization. Last time we zoomed in on the detail of this sub-analysis. This time I'd like us to consider the other sub-analysis looking at the relationship between infant deaths and the number of inhabitants per physician in each country. So if I zoom in on this, I get the sub-analysis in, in its own window. And we see that this analysis map resembles the previous sub-analysis that we considered in many ways. In particular, there are two box plots that are in common. Then there's some transformation of the original data taken from each box plot. Then there's a bivariate regression analysis in which the data were considered graphically and fitted with a least square straight line. And three residual plots were considered. The analysis is in fact virtually identical to the previous, with one exception. The exception is that no <coughs> further analysis has been done on the transformed data. What we would like to do is perform the same kind of analysis that we've done here and in the previous sub-analysis on this new transformed data. What we have in fact then is a pattern in our analysis. What we have are a couple of box plots and a bivariate regression analysis. We'd like to capture this pattern in a generic kind of tool. To do so, what we do is go to the menu items on the analysis map itself. Amongst these menu items is the possibility of creating a new analysis path. If I select this, I get a little window where the analysis path is going to be constructed. In the prompt window, we see that we're prompted for members of this analysis path. Here what we want are examples of what the analysis path should look like, what nodes it should contain. So I'm going to start filling this up with the nodes that I would like, namely box plot, the other box plot, and the bivariate regression analysis with all of its details. So I've selected all of the nodes that I'm interested in, and in what the program notices is that in constructing the, this particular, the nodes that I've looked at, that I've selected rather, it's necessary to have something called infant deaths. So what it's prompting us for is a name for this thing called infant deaths, a parameter name if you will, that it can use in the future. The infant deaths, you'll recall, was the response variable in this analysis, so I'm going to name this parameter response variable. The other thing that was needed was the x variable, which here was the number of inhabitants per position, and we'll call this the explanatory variable. These <coughs> 
variable names are chosen so that they're describing the role that was played by the each of those data vectors in the original analysis map. Now then what we have before us is the analysis path as constructed. These nodes, while they look much like the nodes of the original analysis map, there are, they are in fact generic nodes that contain no data at all. That's why the box plots and other graphic features are not displayed. I can name this analysis path and I'll call it something that is, has some meaning for me, so I'll call it a reg analysis. <clears throat> and if I re compute this analysis map, you see that the name appears in the title bar. Now then, what I would like to do is apply this generic analysis path to a particular data set. In fact, I'd like to apply it to the transform data that we considered before. So in the menus for the uh, analysis map, what I will do is add a new kind of analysis node. And when prompted for it, the new kind of node I would like is the, some, the analysis path that I've called reg analysis. It constructs the new node and asks me what is the parameter that is equivalent to this thing called explanatory variable. This time I'd like the explanatory variable to be the transformed population per physician. So I select that from my existing analysis map and then prompted for the response variable. The response variable will now be the transformed infant deaths. At this point it notices that it's possible to add some string vectors here corresponding to the observations. So I'm going to select countries from the old demographic analysis since it's the same data set for the labels of the string vectors. The analysis path then constructs the nodes that it needs for this particular data set. I'm prompted to sweep out the windows for this node. Here it's the <clears throat> window for the box plot of the uh, transformed population per physician, and now the box plot for the transformed infant deaths. It goes on to calculate the bivariate regression nodes and the bivariate least squares nodes, and afterwards the plots for the residuals. Okay, so here's the first plot that it constructs that involves both of the variables at once. It's a scatter plot where we see the data are fairly bunched up, and this scatter plot can be rescaled to spread the data out. Next plot that it produces in the analysis path is the QQ plot of the residuals from this new fit. second plot of residuals is the histogram of the residuals from the fit. And finally, the path constructs the residuals versus fit node. So each of the plots that were considered in that path are now available to us to consider further should we wish to. And if we notice the analysis map now has a new node. If I recompute this thing to show the, anal the whole analysis map, I have a new node that is a sub-analysis. It comes from the transform data set and it's a sub-analysis representing that small analysis that we just applied. In this way the analysis path that we created is created a smaller analysis which is a larger building block than the previous more primitive building blocks in our analysis. It's a reg analysis. If we zoom in on this, we can see the details of that particular sub-analysis. Since we've used this uh, path in more than one place, it may be useful to keep this path for use on, on other data sets. To do so, I add the analysis path corresponding to this uh, node in the toolbox. If I open my toolbox then I can see the tools that I have and I'd like to add a tool to this thing. So the toolbox menu 
by widen the toolbox, I say that I want to add my reg analysis as one of my new tools. And I'm offered to, to place it in the toolbox where it makes most sense to me. I'll just put it up near the root of my toolbox. We see that the toolbox is expanded to accommodate this new node. The new node has a different icon from the others. These other icons are sub toolboxes. This toolbox, this item here is in fact an analysis path. The icon is meant to indicate that it's something that is rather complex that can be applied to new data. Now then if we zoom in on this icon, we can see the details of that analysis path. So then what we see that is this little network here is in fact the internal structure of a new program, a new program that we can apply to new data.